uh, our theme on inventory. So today we're going to be looking at bin locations. We've covered quite a few in inventory in the last few sessions. So uh, thanks, Mike, and uh, I'll talk to you guys afterwards. Okay, thanks, Tracy. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Let's just carry on here. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about bin locations and barcodes. So the agenda today, and uh, we're going to go through what are bins. Most of you are probably familiar with it, but we'll do a quick review of what a bin location is. I'll talk about whether or not you should use bin locations. I'm not here to sell you on bin locations. I want to kind of discuss what I would say is my decision criteria. We'll talk about the options in SAP. We'll talk about, uh, and then we'll go through the system and we'll, we'll show enabling bin locations and some of the settings, bin location transactions and some bin reporting. And then we'll cover a little bit on the barcode system. So uh, what are bin locations for people who aren't as familiar with it? Um, you can see this example here. It basically takes your warehouse and divides it into logical chunks of space, and each each chunk of the of space would be considered a bin location. So it doesn't actually have to be a bin. In this case, you could see like a Home Depot Rona type home hardware type uh, um, warehouse with this racking, and you're going to see level. Uh, you're going to see the rows. So you take the larger units. Generally, you take a larger dimension and then you break it down into smaller dimensions. So in this case, it only has rows and then shelves. So this is just a really simple one. So you could say row one, shelf D, row one, shelf B, etc. So you can get much more specific with this. This can be row one, column one, shelf two, and I'll, I'll show you kind of a, how to set up those dimensions. But you can just think of it as a logical way of dividing things between your warehouse. So the purpose of this basically is to reduce pick time. So you can say, you know, uh, you know, if you if you have items in X location and Y location, or maybe if you're somebody like Amazon, you have stuff all over the place, it's organized chaos. Um, Amazon is obviously unique, but you can apply some of those concepts of uh, dynamic spacing to your warehouse. And this is to reduce pick time. So if you're using pick lists and using the pick and pack manager, it's actually going to automatically do the picking. It's going to tell you where the bin location is that you should be picking from. So this is one of the primary benefits. So you can basically say, here's a pick list to somebody who's doing picking and they can go through and they can have everything sorted from, you know, row one, two, three, four, and they're going to go through and be able to do the picking very quickly. So generally, the other thing that we're going to advocate is um, <clears throat> putting the items with the highest sales velocity closer to your staging area. So that means if you, you know, by the Pareto analysis method, 20% of your items are probably 80% of your sales, somewhere in there. So we're going to say take that 20% and put it closer to the door. So it helps you to analyze it using this enhanced warehouse reporting and you can say, well, what's selling the quickest? And let's move things around in order to optimize the warehouse. So other things that you get, uh, real-time inventory positioning, obviously, if you say, oh, no, like, where are these chairs in this warehouse? You could just pull up the item and say, what bins is it in? And also, it really helps with um, faster, more accurate inventory accounts because you could say count row one or, you know, count some specific area. And you could say what's supposed to be in there. And you could do really quick cycle counts that are very organized. Um, if you're not using a bin location system, you, you could kind of do this, but it becomes much more difficult. But with the bin location cycle counting, uh, that's a big benefit. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about this. Um, it, you know, it does come at a cost. So again, I don't want to say that uh, you're just going to turn this on and immediately get uh, benefits from it. <clears throat> um, again, I'm not not trying to sell anything in particular. There are many benefits for this, and I wanted to just talk about my decision criteria. So basically, do you need bin locations? I'd say generally no. 
unless you're starting to increase your sales velocity, get a more organized warehouse, and you want um, to have more organization and have a, have a warehouse manager and start to investigate the pick and pack manager. Basically, once you do the pick and pack manager, once you're fully committed to that, that's when it kind of makes more sense to use the real official bin locations because you have to remember, turning the bin locations on means there's an extra small layer of administration, i.e. you have to actually record where you're putting stuff and where you're taking stuff out of. So this sounds great from a top level down, but just keep in mind, it can, you know, there's a period of adjustment to it. So the more process driven your warehouse is getting, the more we're going to recommend that you go for it. So keep in mind, there are very big benefits to it, but you don't necessarily want to jump into it. So I'm talking about the options in SAP. If you want to just get your toes in and get your warehouse set up and start feeling out the bin locations, you can get the majority of the, you can get 75% of the benefit of the bin locations without the extra administration. So you could say, let's try a default bin location as a UDF on a particular item code. You know, if your items are smaller and they don't move around a lot, then you can literally just put a bin location UDF start thinking about the organization of how you would do your bins and then just use that default bin location and then use a pick list and print the default bin location or have a default location and an overflow location and um, then you can start getting the feel for the system so again this is people who are trying to make the transition because if you're watching this video you're probably you're probably not already using them you're you're likely thinking about making a transition so keep that in mind Again, the official SAP bin location system, if you're, if you're of a specific size or you already have a warehouse manager or somebody who is owning the processes, it is a great system, and I'm going to continue talking about that too. So just keep in mind, like I would say, to dip your toe in the water, you could use a default bin UDF and then just print that default bin UDF on the item master out when you're doing your picking, and you're still going to get a good uh, feel of what it's like to have bins. Okay, so we're going to continue on with using the actual official bin locations, and I'm going to talk about how you would get that set up and some of the options around it. So the first thing you need to do is enable it, and it's enabled based on the warehouses. So administration set up inventory warehouses. So this is a general warehouse here. And I made a bin location warehouse here as an example. So this checkbox needs to be checked to enable your bin locations. So you check this box. When you check it, it actually makes a system bin location, and it'll put all your stock into that system bin location. So you can just turn it on, and then it'll move everything in there. You don't have to make a new warehouse, change everything around. It'll You can turn bin locations on for a warehouse and uh, just have it have it transitioned over. So keep that in mind. So you have bin location code separator. I mean, this is a hyphen. You could use a decimal decimal place here. Number of bin locations. This is just a list here of, of what's in the system there and number of items. I'll talk a bit, a bit more about that. The default bin location, you can have this as default for all your items. This kind of goes hand in hand with enabling receiving bin locations. So you can say this particular staging area is the place where we receive everything. So you can say, let's just have staging be a default bin location and a default uh, receiving location. So you can do those types of things to kind of automate the ins and outs. Again, you can, you can kind of see how this is a little bit of a larger warehouse setup where it's more process driven. So you have a staging area and you have a receiving area and then you can basically have things coming in and coming out of there, and then you can have people doing picking and staging and packing. So you don't have to use this. Again, you're, you're dipping your feet in here, or you're starting to get um, set up with bins, but once you're starting to get more organized, and again, with the warehouse manager, you can manage all those particular options there. Auto allocation will allow you to do the selection of the bins based on some sort of methodology. So the pick and pack manager, and I will show this in a little bit, will use this methodology in order to issue things out and 
the pick and pack manager again automates what is going to be recommended when you're going to see the pick list so like I said my decision criteria a lot of the times hinges on are you comfortable with the pick and pack manager mechanism methodology so that was last week's video if you missed the picking type video just ask Tracy and she can provide you with a link to it but if you're not comfortable with the last two kind of me uh, mechanisms that use the pick and pack manager that's where I would say maybe try my UDF methodology, the basic kind of dip your toe in the water one. If you are committed to the pick and pack manager, that's when this starts to really make sense because you could start to organize your warehouse. And again, if you have your 20% of your items that make you 80% of the revenue type setup close to this staging area, you're going to get a lot of benefit out of it. And it's going to just pick things really close. And then you can organize your pick list by say alphabetical order, and then you can just go A, A1, A2, A3, A4, boom, you have everything picked, and that's what uh, where you get that benefit. Okay, so what once you've enabled this, um, what you need to do is you need to go through and you need to set up the bin location uh, fields. So in this case, this is a demo database, and we're gonna see aisle, shelf, and level. These are activated and you can call them whatever you want, row, shelf, level, and you can go uh, further than this in depth. So this was just an experiment with a three-dimensional bin location shelving setup, but I didn't continue with it. So I just have aisle, shelf, level, and uh, you can call these whatever you want, but this would be uh, the different breakdowns of each portion of your bin location setup. Secondly, we have bin location attributes. There's a whole bunch of them here used for tracking. I just did one inventory type just as an example, but this basically becomes a drop-down list, and you can group things together or do specific reporting based on these different attributes. So I just did inventory type, and I'll show you an example as we go. Bin location attributes. So I did inventory type, and you can see here dangerous goods. I, I just thought of that as an example that stood out, but it could be any type of thing that you would want. It could be like returned goods or you know, some sort of method, uh, some sort of tracking dimension that you want to use that uh, isn't an official bin, but maybe it's something that you want to just tag to that particular item. The sub-level codes, you then need to actually make the code in the description. So you can see each of these dimensions, aisle, shelf, and level. So that's warehouse sublevel codes. You set A1, aisle one, A2, aisle two, et cetera, et cetera. So this is got four aisles, kind of a small, medium size setup for a warehouse. And you've set these up. Then you say shelves. How many shelves does this particular set of racking have? And how many levels does each shelf have? So in this case, it's three, okay? <clears throat> then you go to generate all of these particular, or you could generate these all just based on some sort of calculation. So this will help you to make all your aisles. So, you know, if you have A to Z, you can make aisle A to Z, shelf, whatever, one to, one to six, and then levels one to three, and you can make all of those in there. So this just helps you to automate what you're doing. So these, again, are just making kind of the, the, the pieces of the recipe here for when you're actually making the bins. So this has not made any of the bins. In this case, I already have bins created, but this is just defining the maximum dimensions for each one, of, well, the maximum options for each one of these dimensions. So now what you actually need to do is generate the list of bins. So inventory, bin locations, bin location management, and now you can use this to generate a list of, so we're saying 05 to 05, and then you can say aisle one to aisle four, and then you could say shelf one to shelf six. So this is a... No, but I'm listening Hello? Hi, do you mind muting yourself? Is that, if that's I just did. <laughs> I okay. just did my can Go ahead. Okay, okay sorry, I couldn't see, uh, okay. I couldn't see the, who's speaking. All right, sorry, guys. So um, warehouse 05 aisle. So you're setting up all these options and the dimensions, and this is going to pre-mutate all these. So it's going to make 05A1S1, L1, 05A1S1, L2, 05A1S1, L3, etc. So you don't have to go through and make every single combination. Again, they're they're 
could be hundreds, potentially thousands in there that you're going to make them. And you can set specific ranges to be receiving bin locations, and you can set them based on this. You can also use this form to update or delete specific bins. So this is something that you would use to actually make the bins, and now you're ready to go. So once this has been created, um, you are ready to check out your bin location master data. So like any of the other options and pieces of data in the system, you have your master data. So the master data here, I'm just going to go to the first one. So this is what's generated from your bin location uh, code or bin location management. 05, A1, S1, L1, L2, L3, etc. So you can see here, this is a summary. It's tagged as dangerous goods. There could be multiple attributes there. And you could see some statistics, item quantity, 676. There's lots of serials in there, six items. You can see what the content list is. You can break it out by batches and stuff. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. Okay, you can do restrictions by maximum quantity, you could do restrictions by weight, you can add a barcode to this particular location and a description, and we are going to talk a little bit more about barcodes later. You don't have to use every dimension as well, so I have some customers that have like uh, O5 freezer or O5, you know, trailer, maybe there are other locations. So they're, they're a specific or 05 showroom. Um, you know, you don't have, so this, this doesn't have to have a shelf in the level. You don't have to put like a placeholder in the shelf in the level. You can, you can make these logical areas. So you could say what's in our showroom. Or if you are looking for stock, you could say, oh, no, you know, we can't take that one. That's actually in the showroom. It's not available. Um, so you can, you can do all those to set up bins and have a very logical setup of where all your stuff is. Another thing you could do is item restrictions. So you could say specific groups or items only. If you say, you know, this type of item is in this particular area, you could do unit of measure restrictions. So you could say only pallets or only bulk or only boxes or only individual units. Maybe it's um, a small bin broken down just for specific uh, end user size quantities, or one bottle, one uh, particular, you know, each unit. Batch restrictions, transaction restrictions, this is only inbound, so maybe you have a quarantine area and you're saying this is only for this particular item and only for this particular transaction inbound, and then you take everything into that receiving location and then you um, move it out once it has been inspected. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate a quick um, receiving and delivery and just show you what it is like to actually use the bin locations. So I'm going to say we're receiving here. So this is just Acme Associates. This is a goods receipt PO. So obviously you would have this from a PO copied to a goods receipt PO. So this is for our bin warehouse 0505. And you're going to see here bin location allocation. If I try to add this, <coughs> it's not going to let me. So what you need to do then is actually select the bin location. So I can proactively do that, click here, click here, and then I can pick this one and allocate my one unit there. So this is what I'm saying. If you don't think this is going to benefit you, don't use it. It's not a 100% requirement. Start with the UDF. But if you're always losing things and you don't know where things are and your warehouse is sufficient size and you're using the pick and pack manager, you know, this is just a fact of life for a larger warehouse. You need to know where your stuff is. You have turnover with your warehouse people. They don't know the warehouse inside and outside and you need to codify this to maximize the speed of what you're doing. You have a process. This could be automated too. For the goods receipt, this could only be one location. And I did that for this item here. So bin location, this one has a, has a default um, location. I could make this automatically appear, but personally, I don't necessarily like to automate this because if nobody has to look at it and nobody actually has to touch it, then you're not necessarily getting any benefit out of it because they won't even look at it. You know, I, you don't want to necessarily automate this, especially at the beginning, you want to make sure people are thinking about where they're putting stuff and they're not just throwing things in the side and the receiving area or staging area. You think it's going to slow you down, 
But really, if you take your time and you put things in the bin location, it takes a couple extra minutes and you're not running around like a chicken with its head cut off, you will get a lot of benefit out of this. So keep in mind, this is for a different style of warehouse. You're process driven, you're at a specific velocity, you're like Ikea or something, you know, that there's a machine and the machine is handling the processes and you want to reduce errors more than you want to try to increase the speed of everything, you know, and speed equals mistakes. So once you get to that point, this type of uh, small administration is going to really help you. Um, but until then, maybe my other option is good too. Okay, so that's it. Added those. I'm going to do a delivery. So the delivery is effectively the same thing. I'm just going to do to myself here, two items. So on the delivery side, if you are not using the pick and pack manager, I'll show the pick and pack manager in a second, you do need to select a bin. So you generally what you're going to have on on your picking list, if you're using, again, from the video last week, if you're using method one or two, you want a little space on the pick list to write what bin you took it from. The last thing you want to do is be running around the warehouse and you don't remember where you took it from and people are distracting you and then you come back and then you pull it from the wrong location and then you're like, oh, I'm going to fix that later, but oh no, it's lunchtime and then you go for lunchtime and then you see this. You have to be kind of focused on what you're doing or um, what we'll talk about barcodes later too will help. But so this method one and two, you're doing this manually. So this tells you where they are. I'm just going to select one from there and in this one. And again, I can automate this, but I don't really see the automation in this regard as being that useful because then it effectively just gives the person doing the sale the excuse of I needed to do it fast. And therefore, when I do it fast, it's inaccurate. And when I do it inaccurate, it's an absolute nightmare, probably worse than even using bins if you're not paying attention with that. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so that's on the delivery side. The last thing I'll show for processes is the pick and pack. So again, the pick and pack manager works great with the bins because it kind of takes away the particular kind of uh, hunt and peck mechanism of searching for your inventory. So you can basically say, these are the open deliveries that we're going to deliver on warehouse five release it to a pick list, you can group them by the specific areas, you can group it by attributes, you can group it by business partner in order. I'm just picking just these two, they're from on order just to make it really simple. And I'm gonna generate this pick list. Go to released, <clears throat> and you can see where it's been released, it's already picked a bin location based on you know whatever the criteria was. If it was FIFO, be FIFO, is LIFO, be LIFO, I think in this case it's just bin location sort code. So you want to make your highest velocity areas the highest in alphanumeric. That's my recommendation. So the closest to the door is A1, moves back, and, and then you can have those things. So you actually have a printout. Let's just check this out. So when you do print this out or if it auto-generates, um, you know, obviously this, this is a crystal report, so we can make this a bit wider. But you're going to be able to sort this based on, again, the alphanumeric mechanism of doing this. So when you're ready to do this, and you've kind of analyzed what moves the quickest, and you've moved those around, um, this should increase the speed of your picking quite substantially because they're gonna go in order, especially if you have to use a forklift or something, you don't have to go to E, and then you know back to A, and then to Q, and then all over the place, you're going in an organized method of picking what you're doing. Okay, and then you pick based on those, and you can fill them out there. Transfers, inventory transfers, obviously the same. You have to pick where they're coming from and where they're going to. So a bit about the reporting. Um, if you're looking at a particular item and you're saying, where is this? You can go to bin location content list. If there were batches, you can actually show which bin or which bin had the particular batch number. You can also go into inventory reports and go to bin location content list, and this will just run through everything again. You could say display batches and serial numbers. You can filter these for particular items, and it's going to tell you exactly where each of these serial numbers are. You could do custom crystal reports on things as well, and uh, again, to analyze your velocity, you can use those too. So I want to talk a little bit about the barcodes before we go. Um, it works really well with a mobile scanner. Everybody wants to get to that point. So we use a product called Projumex Scan, and that's next week's
demo. We're going to be going through that. So again, when you're using the pick and pack and you're trying to add some processes to your warehouse, this makes everything make way more sense because you can pick right from the right from the gun or mobile scanner and you can scan the barcodes and you can scan the items and you can scan everything so that you're reducing this need for doing everything manually and again that is another level of uh, efficiency that you're going to gain when you could just scan 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 because then the person doing it has to think less they can you know the systems telling them it's in this spot they go there, they have their picking cart or whatever, and they go scan, put it in the cart, scan, put it in the cart, bring it up to packing level, and they can uh, ship it out that way. So barcodes in SAP you can use here. I've just done uh, two. I did a manufacturer's barcode and then maybe the SAP business objects, which is this company for demo purposes. So you could have multiple there. You can also do it by unit of measure. So a pallet or a box or everything would relate to this particular unit of measure. In this case, I don't have too much detail in here. I just wanted to show this briefly. So this, by and in and of itself, is not that useful, but obviously when used with a scanner, you can do a lot of different things with it. You could print out the barcodes. You can print out the bins, barcodes. The barcodes themselves, as you saw, had, had a barcode spot. So this works really well with the Projimex scan. So that's something that uh, you want to check out next week with our next demo. So that's it for me today. I'm going to hand it back to Tracy. Thank you guys very much. Does, uh, does anybody have any questions, guys? Uh, and by the way, it's not next week because we do these every two weeks. So it's going to be on the 16th. So, so we're going to be looking at Produmex. Um, I'm going to send you the links for that in two weeks. And uh, as I always say, you've got your support desk here if you have any questions. I'm going to be sending you by email a document that I have on bin locations, which really goes a bit more in the depth if you have any other questions. And uh, I'll be sharing the recording on Dropbox. So if anybody needs anything, you've got my email right there. So thanks for coming and have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Mike. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tracy.